I'll call the meeting to order. Rebecca, please call the roll. Arnold? Here. Allie? Yes. Andy? Here. Rasmussen? Yes. Pam? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Thank you. Are there any uh, changes to the agenda tonight, Council? If not, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Approval of the minutes of the May 10th, 2021 Council meeting. Approval of May 14th, 2021 payroll in the amount of $121,804.68. Approval of general obligation debt in the amount of $1,154,851.25. Approval of state revolving fund debt in the amount of $424,287.50. Consent of park use permit, uh, KMCD Lee Month's retirement. Acceptance of library board minutes. Resolution approving employment in the police department. <clears throat> Approval of liquor license for Shokai, Casey's General Store, number 3327 South, BPO Elks Lodge, number 1192. Approval of claims in the amount of $217,483.37. There were no claims, more than 75,000. Motion to approve consent agenda. Second. Moved by Gandhi, second by Flournoy. Any discussion or questions? Not please call the roll. Gandhi? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Ham? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Okay, under public forum and appearances, uh, the first one is regarding the Greater Jefferson County Fair. Is Samantha here tonight? Doesn't look like it. Um, so I think this is pretty much the same route as usual, right? I believe so, correct. That's what I recall. Um, so, any questions, Council? Do you want to make a motion to approve that? They start at the high school. The parade route for the Jersey County Fair for 2021. Thank you. Second. Moved by Flournoy. Second by Gandhi. Any other questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those same signs, say nay. Okay. Motion carried. Okay, next is uh, blocking parking spaces. Uh, Nicole f with uh, Rolling Cravings Food Truck, is she here? No, apparently she has not made it either. Okay. What she's requesting is every, every Wednesday is to utilize part of the, pu the public parking around the center square to uh, put their uh, food truck on to serve food there. Uh, so the- During the farmer's market? No, um, during the lunchtime, from like 11 to 2 or something like that. I think well, it's every Wednesday. Well, on Wednesdays. Every Wednesday. Just council. Just so, so we're looking at uh, other cities to see what they do with public parking and allowing people to, to use vendor trucks in those areas. Um, we're still doing some research. We're okay with maybe approving this for a month. And then so we have a little bit of time to come up with a plan as far as, because we are we do believe that there's gonna be more than that, just this one. And if we allow it in our public parking, we're, you know, it's gonna eventually probably, if we get too many, it's gonna cause a problem. Right. So. Normally we do this in conjunction with some kind of event going correct. on. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, but. They've had, they've had good success. They've, they've been in a couple private parking lots in town and have been doing very well. So they want to be, try it up on the square, which we're not, we're not, the city is not opposed to it, but I think we need to look at a process and an approval process for the future. So I would, we recommend go ahead and approve this, but approve it for a month's time and we'll come back with a proposal for handling this in the future prior to that month. None of the businesses have none of the businesses have objected to well spots being blocked. They, they probably don't know yet. They probably aren't aware of it. That's, we wouldn't we, wouldn't we want them on on the square side versus yeah. right in front of the old Georges, which is what I understood. I think they want on the square side, it sounds like to me. Yeah, I think they went across the street from yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Not on, okay. Yeah. yeah. You're right. On in the center square, not. Yep. Yeah. Outside or yeah, not the outside square, the inside. Yep. So it's accessible from the park. Yes. 
Are they, are they paying any fee to the city for using the city parking? No. The only thing they're using right now, or they have right now, is a peddler's permit. So you are suggesting we have a month to evaluate the use of the city through, probably through having, June? Is permit, that what you're saying? Yes, and have a permit process for utilizing public parking. I've read a couple of the permits other cities have, and one contingency or one, one rule is they have to stay a certain distance from brick and mortar restaurants. And yeah, and some of them do month to month, some of them do a season fee. It's not unlike what we do with the outdoor dining on sidewalks. They have to pay that fee every year. The, the business has to pay it every year that they do it. Um, and I can't remember how many parking spaces does this truck and trailer take? It's like four spaces, isn't it? I was going to say eight, but I don't know if it's right. Eight, Scott eight. says eight. Yeah, so that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's mm -hmm. Quite a few. Yeah. And if we had two or three that size, it would be a lot. So then maybe well, you have to be 16. Yeah. In that case, you might have to, they have to pick different days that they're allowed to be out there. So right. they're not, rotate. yeah, they're not yeah. all there at the same time. Where do they normally set up? Uh, right next to the Summit Pharmacy to the west is where they, I've seen them a lot. I don't recall, I think they've been somewhere else too, but I don't remember. I think they've been at the dew drop outside of town few of the places dollar general parking lot. well that was was that the same was that the same one or was that the uh i think that's Mexican a different one was well, that one <clears throat> that one they were people complained about the gener generator that was being run making noise they don't have such an operation here they would they, have, quiet. they have to have a generator to run so i don't know how loud it is. We haven't had any complaints on it as far as I'm aware. I just know the one in front of Dollar General, there were people complaining to me about it. I'm not aware of that. I'll give you a little bit of information. Uh, they've got a generator in the back of their truck, actually, too. They're very quiet. They've been at um, Summit. They've been at Dollar General. They've been at True Value. Um, obviously, they used to have the restaurant in town. They were very successful. They want to continue that. They don't want it every day, you know, once a week. Michael's put uh, tables up on the square for that type of thing, and if we're going to utilize them, you know, I, I thought it was a good idea for them to come and, you know, propose this and give them that um, other option for people to um, explore in the way of food over the lunch hour. I know Nikki wanted to be here tonight. They're actually in Kiyosakwa tonight, or with, they were in Kiyosakwa with the truck today, and they got done at 7, so I'm guessing she may even mm -hmm. still be here yet tonight if you have more questions. But Okay, so the suggestion is to give approval through June 30th, um, see how it goes, and while we do a little more research. Yeah, so I make the motion to let them use the spot from 11 to 2 on Wednesdays in the month of June. Okay, moved by Flournoy. Second. Second by Two Hill. Any other discussion? Not, please call a roll. Flournoy? Yes. Two Hill? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Halley? Yes. Ham? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Uh, next on the agenda is the Fairfield Arts and Convention Center Summer Sun Series Street Closures. Lindsay, are you going to talk about that? <coughs> Yeah, sure. So um, we've got a series of six concerts planned. They're free to the public. They're outside. We thought that was a good way to ease back into having concerts safely and having people out um, enjoying music again. We're just talking about closing the street right in front of the building, um, basically just that block. I believe we've asked for it from a, a starting at noon that day until... Um, uh, you know, I'm going to say 10 o'clock, but then you'll probably look and I'll be wrong. So sometime around in that in that time frame, um, it's likely that we'll be able to open it up or uh, sooner than that. It's likely that we won't have to close it quite as early, but we wanted to be safe when we ask for the parameters. Um, and it, now that I'm, I'm seeing some of the other things on here, I, I also want to ask, is it also necessary for me to ask for um, a noise exemption? as we will be having con the concerts outside. They'll be done by before 9 p.m. I just, I don't know what your code is. I'm, I'm so sorry. These are all Wednesdays, correct? That's correct. Every other Wednesday night from June 2nd to August 11th. I would 
seems to me like you would want to include that, don't you think? Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. But it's... Yeah, 10 o'clock on a Friday or Saturday is perceived differently than 10 o'clock on a Wednesday. So I would, mm -hmm. I would well, say you'd want it. And the noise will be done between 8.30 and 9. We'll just be bringing stuff back inside, okay. equipment and all that, until about 10. Any questions, Council? Any additional questions? So we're closing the street at 7 until 10? What would you say noon about? Noon is when we would want to start closing the street so that we can get our equipment out there and get set, and get up, set up. Same day. Yep. Really, it's noon to 10 that you want to close the streets, not 7 to 10. That's correct. This is not going to interfere with a food truck uh, situation, is it? That's no. on a different square Another part, part of the street. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is in the evening. Well, they set up at noon. At noon. How is that going to affect the courthouse on Wednesdays? Because what kind of traffic do they have on Wednesdays? Can't answer that, but you, you, there's, the courthouse still has access on three different sides, and they have the... We could probably set the barricade up to the south entrance, uh, to the south of that entrance to the, that, the drive-in of their parking lot to the nor on the north side of that building. That's exactly what we were thinking as well. So then you can allow access there too. So I, okay. minimal. It's the one day of the week that there's not court service. Oh, well, that's even better. There you go. So. Perfect. And I would love to tell you that I knew that and planned it, but it's just yeah. <laughs> luck. Pretend. Take that. Man. <laughs> and this street has been blocked off before. I remember when the streetscape, when the Central Park was being completely repaved, live on a square, moved to this location and blocked mm -hmm. off this street. And then Fairfest for three years, I think, used this location. So uh, they also block it off for the tractor, farm track, tractor yeah, shows. Yeah, tractor show. Right. So no, I'm not against blocking at all. Lindsay, what what equipment? Were you going to have a stage mm -hmm. and table and chairs, or just uh, we're supposed to bring our own lawn chairs, right? Yeah, we're asking people to bring their own lawn chairs. That way, people can be in charge of their own social distancing um, and and set up in their pods as they wish. Um, we're just setting up stage and sound equipment and a, um, some minimal lighting as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the street closure. Thank second. you. Moved by Halley, second by Flournoy. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say sign. Okay. Motion passed. Thank, Thank you. you. We will move to resolutions, action items, and ordinances. Uh, first resolution is consideration to remove no parking signature signage, excuse me, on the south side of West Depot Avenue in the 600 and 800 blocks. And I understand safety committee discussed this. This was a request by Daryl, head of street departments. Anybody want to discuss? Yeah. Why don't you talk about it? Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, Daryl brought this to public safety in this area um, there is no parking on both sides of the street and um, that was due to the foundry traffic from years ago and no parking on both sides is no longer necessary the um, there is several apartment buildings in this section as well that is um, they're currently using the right-of-way for the parking and so we'd like to open up um, one side of the street for parking by removing the no parking. What do we do about the right away? Um, the right away, I believe that Scott has notified the property owner that um, they need to be cleaning up and reshaping their right away once this is done and the, the tenants have another place to park. Thank you. So I make a motion to allow the removal of no parking signage on the south side of West Depot as in the 600 and 800 blocks. Second. I'll second it. Okay, moved by Flournoy, second by Rasmussen. Any other discussion? Not please call the roll. Flournoy? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Pam? Yes. Duhill? Yes. Uh, the next matter is we are going to open a public hearing on the fiscal year 21 budget amendment, but Rebecca, do you want to just quickly go over that and then we'll open the public hearing? Okay. 
Jason, if you could open the resolution, the consideration of the fiscal year budget amendment. Thank you. And scroll down just a bit. Down towards the bottom is most of the ex explanation. So the revenues increased a bit due to the CARES Act funding. Um, it was just unbudgeted, much like the radios that were purchased for both the fire and the police departments. We also purchased property on West Briggs, and we purchased a fire truck a year ahead of schedule. So that was all unbudgeted items. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I will now open the public hearing. Is there anyone that wishes to speak regarding uh, this change in budget? <clears throat> Doesn't look like it. If not, I'll close the public hearing and we'll move on to the resolution and uh, request a motion to approve. Unless you have questions. Motion to approve resolution. Thank you. Second. Motion by Gandhi, second by Flournoy. One question. Okay. It looks like our ending fund balance was a little lower after the amendment there at the bottom. Correct. So about 400 some thousand lower? Yes. Okay. We're okay with that. Because it's expenses that we would have incurred in future years. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. It's my only question. Thank you. Impressive. Any other questions? not, please call the roll. Gandhi? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Ham? Yes. Thank you. Approved unanimously. Uh, the next tested, we're going to open a public hearing just a sec uh, regarding accepting uh, the completion of the gift of Petra's Park. John, do you want to just yeah. update us a little bit before we open the public hearing? think you all have in your package uh, a deed this is all right after the budget amendment that you just looked at uh, and the warranty deed was signed by the Greater Jefferson County Foundation end of last week uh, we're not recording it until you accept it subject to the things that are said in your resolution and the resolution is intended to make sure that what you're accepting has nothing outstanding against it and, and it, so it assumes there's no encumbrances and assumes that you're getting good title assumes that this is all uh, kosher uh, under irs proceedings uh, and we have to back up three years though because we have been here once before uh, the Stanley Family Foundation, uh, when this was decided upon as a project, we already had our uh, tax documents signed and authorized by the council uh, back at that time, but it was a different entity. It was the Stanley Family Foundation uh, planning to donate to the city, but the plan was spelled out in an agreement that included a pass-through and since that time, the Greater Jefferson County Foundation has been sort of the escrow agent for uh, the charitable gift. So we're finally there. Uh, everything's done. I believe they've probably spent a couple hundred thousand dollars on the improvements over there. Plus, there was uh, about 60000 that we knew about at the time shown in the agreement to purchase that corner. Uh, and everything's ready to go, in my opinion, as your uh, examining attorney. Uh, this was intended, uh, it, the last thing that would be done before we have a dedication of this, and there's an attachment at the back of your uh, uh, tablets about that dedication, and my information now is it's Wednesday instead of earlier discussions about Tuesday, but... Uh, we do need to pass this resolution so the resolution and the deed can be now recorded. Great, thank you. So I'll open the public hearing. Um, is there anyone, Rebecca? Okay, so we'll close the public hearing. Okay, council, were there any more questions for John? Okay, 
I'll entertain a motion. Motion. To accept the dedication deed. Second. Acknowledging mm -hmm. completion of. So that was uh, moved by Flournoy, second by Gandhi. Sure, okay. that was an assist by Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, any other discussion? One point, and that is just on the behalf of our Parks Department, um, to help balance the equation, they've taken on a lot more work over the years, public beach, now this, the nodes downtown that they take care of. It would be nice to take something off their plate at some point, so something to just keep in the back of your head or maybe <coughs> explore in one of our committees some of the less well-used parks that maybe could be um, let go of. Take that off of their, their maintenance schedule. As you know, this is, I've been pulling weeds out of the, out of the nodes here at the park and, and trim the trees a little bit. Um, and I know the parks department's gonna have to do a lot of work there or some work there. And mm -hmm. I appreciate the design was meant to be low maintenance, but low maintenance isn't no maintenance. So just in the spirit of not stressing our parks department, I think we should explore some ways we could ease their burden um, like I said, to kind of balance the equation a bit. That doesn't take away from the fact this is a beautiful park, a beautiful gift, and will be very well used. Appreciate that uh, sentiment. I agree with that. And um, I have asked Calvin and Pam to put together a list of all the parks and in their view, what's priority and what's not priority, and then have that, as soon as we have that, to have that discussion at property committee. So. I, I, I can appreciate what you're saying there, definitely. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Uh, please call the roll. Flournoy? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Ham? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Two Hill? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next action item is consideration to accept 9th and Burlington Avenue pedestrian improvements as final. Uh, Melanie or, okay. What we have before you tonight is the acceptance of uh, the pedestrian improvements on 9th and Burlington. The majority of this work was completed last uh, October, November. We had a couple punch list items that they finally got carried over once the weather turned nice. So we are ready to accept it. As you may recall, uh, $66,000 of this project was paid by T-STEP funds through the DOT. Uh, so what we have tonight is accepting the project and releasing the retainage estimate number four for four thousand and one dollars. Any questions, Council? I'll move to approve. Second. Okay. Moved by Hallie, second by Flournoy. Any other questions? Now please call the roll. Hallie? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Andy? Yes. Ham? Yes. Two Hill? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Thank you. Approved unanimously. Uh, next action item, consideration to award bid for proposed street improvements for 23rd, 9th, and the C Street paving. All right. Um, so I'm not going to answer any of the details about the project, but um, this project was, uh, bids were received uh, a couple weeks ago, and at your last council meeting, um, I asked that you give us a little bit more time to look at the bids as well as look at the funding. Um, we do feel that the bids are fair, despite having one bidder. Um, what we have, in, in talking to this contractor as well as other contractors, um, supplies of all kinds of materials are becoming short. Um, they are increasing the time, uh, the, the delay in getting materials is an issue. And then also um, a little more localized issue is um, a shortage of fly ash, which, which is uh, part of the concrete mix. And so we think that all of those things, given that this is a lot larger project than Maryland Carpenter, um, the large, longer time frame just allows more opportunities for unknowns to pop their head up. And so we believe that that is why the bids are higher than the estimate. Um, so we do still feel like they're fair. Uh, then. What you'll see up here is um, that the total project cost, including engineering and contingency, is around $1.5 million. Uh, the following funding sources are expected to be used, and this was discussed in the capital improvements plan with one modification. 
um, that we would be looking at bond proceeds paid back through the debt levy, bond proceeds paid back through the West Industrial TIF, um, and then the changes, the sidewalk funds, we had originally budgeted around 18,000 to come from the sidewalk funds, so we're asking for just a little bit more. And then the next paragraph, and this is um, one of the decisions to be made, um, is whether to include replacing all of the sidewalk on 9th Street. This was discussed when we went to bid for the project. Um, really, there is not a lot of sidewalk on 9th that is optional. Um, and so we think that for the $3,700 to have good access to our rec center um, is worth it. And again, because we'll be using the sidewalk funds um, to pay for it, uh, we think that's a good investment in the area. Um, so staff and French Renneker, we're recommending award 100% of the project scope to Jones Contracting. Anything you want to add, Matt? Happy to answer any questions. Good job. Any questions, Council? Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Moved Second. by Gandy. Second. Second by Ham. Any other additional questions? Not please call the roll. Gandy? Yes. Ham? Yes. Halley? Yes. Ham uh, Rasmussen? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next action item, consideration accept Libertyville Road sanitary sewer improvements as final. Sure. So what we have is a couple things before you with this item. One is change order number five. And really what this one does is it's just a quantity adjustment. Uh, we wanted to make the contract amount match what was actually used on the project. So for this one, it's actually a deduct of $48,687.18. And the last one is accepting the project. You might remember you released a portion of the retainage last, I believe October, November, something like that. There's a little concern making sure the seating and the settlement was completed. Uh, we had to go back in and, or Drish had to go back in and do a little bit more seating to make sure all the property owners were appeased on the north side of Libertyville Road. So what we would like is to do a final quantities and retainage pay estimate and the amount of $30,200 and to accept the project Great. with Drish Construction. And we like the uh, savings. <laughs> Those are always nice. Yeah. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> Any questions, Council? Move to approve. Thank you, Martha. Mm -hmm. Moved by Rasmussen. Second. Second by Gandhi. No additional questions. Please call the roll. Rasmussen? Yes. Gandhi? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Ham? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Next action item, consideration of funding agreement with Iowa Department of Transportation for Traffic Safety Improvement Program funding. Uh, this is regarding the Highway 1 South um, and the roundabout at Libertyville Road. Uh, so like 23rd, 9th, and C, uh, we are utilizing multiple funding sources for Highway 1. Um, one of those is the traffic Traffic Safety Improvements Program, or TSIP. It's a grant program through the Iowa Department of, Iowa Department of Transportation. Um, the city was awarded the maximum amount of uh, 500,000, and uh, that 500,000 will go specifically to the safety-related items, um, which is at a total of 1.8 million. Um, so even if there are changes during the project, we will still be utilizing all of the grant funds um, other than that, there's nothing special about the agreement, just standard procedure with the Department of Transportation, and I'd recommend approval. Thank you, Melanie. Any questions? Construction is what year again? Um, so we're later on in the agenda, you have um, some items related to property values. So the overall schedule is that over the next six months, we'll be acquiring uh, the right-of-way and easements that are needed for the project. Next summer, we'll be seeing, uh, we'll likely be seeing some utility re relocation. Um, some of the poles particularly need to be relocated. And so that would put construction of the roadway in 2023. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you. Moved by Gandhi. Second. Second. Second by Ham. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussion? 
Not please call the roll. Gandhi? Yes. Pam? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Two Hill? Yes. Hallie? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next action item, consideration of engineering services agreement with McClure for step three contingent upon USDA approval. All right, so I'm going to let Alex explain uh, the engineering services agreement, but I just wanted to remind uh, the group what we have here is, um, although we're about ready to finish step two, we know that we're not done on our sanitary sewer collection improvements. Um, so step three starts improvements to the west side of the system. Uh, particularly Grease Lightning Lift Station, which is our largest lift station within the system. Um, the Water and Sewer Committee um, received proposals or um, statements of qualifications from firms and selected McClure, and now we're at the point of approving a contract. Uh, then after the contract, there were two items related to the wastewater treatment plant that we forgot to put on the agenda for your approval. Alex is going to cover those while he's here, but we won't act on them until your next meeting. So, Alex, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Melanie. <laughs> okay, so I think the first item we want to go through is, is the agreement for step three. Um, so just kind of a brief overview of the project scope, um, which we've kind of refined over the years here as we've gotten through the first couple of steps um, in the city's program. Um, but it basically consists of a new um, wet weather sewer lift station located adjacent to the existing grease lighting lift station down on the southwest side of town. The approximate capacity of that lift station is around 14 million gallons a day, which is a pretty big number, um, about roughly 40% of what the city could see in a, in a peak wet weather event. Um, coupled with that, um, there would be some sort of dry weather um, pumping <clears throat> pumping for, for normal flows that come down the sewer. Um, some were probably in the in the three to four million gallon a day range, which is what the existing capacity of the grease lighting lift station is. Um, along with the lift station, um, we're looking at about 1,400 feet of 36 inch diameter sanitary sewer upstream. That takes us from the proposed lift station site across the road, kind of a little bit out of the park. Um, and then on the other end of that is, is the force main, um, and there's about 10,250 linear feet uh, of 24 inch diameter force main with the project. That parallels the existing alignment um, <clears throat> until you get to the hospital. Um, and then as you get kind of toward the hospital on Highway 1, we propose to have the force main actually cross uh, the road and then kind of parallel the, the county trail all the way down to the step one um, 54 inch trunk sewer. Um, purpose of doing that is basically to be able to construct a slightly smaller pipe diameter at a, at a lower depth and save the city some cost. Um, the preliminary cost estimate that we've put together based on the scope of work that we've worked uh, with staff to refine is about $10 million for this, uh, for this step. Um, and then in terms of schedule, um, we're looking at uh, about a 12-month design permitting and uh, possible property acquisition process. Um, so if we're going to start here in June, we're looking at probably bidding the project about a year from now. Um, <clears throat> given the work that's required, we're planning to split the project up into two prime contracts. Um, one contract would consist of kind of the lift station vertical construction work. The second contract would consist of the, the horizontal pipe work construction. Um, the plan would be to bid those projects simultaneously, knowing that they could be constructed on different schedules and they probably have different timelines to complete. Um, but we believe it's probably going to be about a 15-month construction window. Um, assuming we can get the project bid um, early next summer or late next spring, depending on how you look at where we are at this point in the year. Um, so what that means is, you know, bid summer 2022, um, construction would begin then, and ideally we'd have uh, construction wrap up in the fall of 2023 for this project. Um, so that kind of goes through the general scope of the project. Um, we're planning on working with Pathfinders to apply for USDA Rural Development funding for this, as well as possibly apply for some other grants uh, as well. Part of that process is getting a preliminary engineering report completed, so that's number one on our priority list as soon as the contract is approved. Um, and then as we go through design, it's a pretty standard design process. A few different, um, or a few kind of unique things to this project is there's going to be a fair amount of uh, boundary survey that we're going to have to do along the force main alignment to ensure that the city has proper easement documentation um, for that pipe. Um, 
and then we will also be having a geotechnical engineering kind of under our scope of work, which is included in the contract. You guys have any questions for me on that? I didn't think we were doing the gravity portion. Okay, we can work through that. Okay. <laughs> so we'll have to do something. Um, yeah. But yeah. when you come across Highway One, you go underneath. This yeah, new yeah. paving so the, that they're going to put down, how do you, how's that going to get coordinated? Yeah, so we'd be crossing like a DOT right away at that point. Um, so that section of the pipe would be uh, uh, constructed with trenchless technology and a, ca a steel casing pipe, um, probably boring jack or some sort of other trenchless construction yeah. method. Okay. Uh, so there would be no pavement disruption at that point. Yeah, to that's what I one. just wondered how that was going to coordinate. Yep. So I would move that we approve the engineering services agreement with, with Clearer. For step three, contingent upon USDA approval. Okay, thank you. Second. Moved by Flournoy, second by Gandhi. Any other questions or discussion? Not, please call the roll. Flournoy? Yes. Gandhi? Yes. Pam? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Suhill? Yes. Thank you, approve unanimously. Yeah, thank you very much, and we appreciate your business and are looking forward to delivering the next project for you guys. Thank you. Um, uh, next action. I guess you want to consider talking, having me cover yeah. the other two items now at this point? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So are we starting with uh, the uh -huh. substantial completion? Jason, would you open the wastewater treatment update? Yes. Where do I go? Uh, this is fine uh, for now, um, I guess, if everyone has a copy of this. Um, so you may recall um, last year we added a fair amount of scope to the wastewater plant project, which is the main reason why the project is not done and closed out at this point. Um, what that consisted of was replacement of the two existing final clarifiers, um, some additional improvements to the sludge holding tank, um, and then some troubleshooting uh, with the sludge transfer pumps. All of that system is kind of tied together. So what we did um, about a year ago was work through the substantial completion process for all of the work except this portion of the work. Um, it was brought to our attention from USDA that uh, we had never taken this in front of council when we did our 11 month walkthrough on the previous section. Um, so we decided that we should probably bring it before you uh, for, to, for approval. But this portion of the work was substantially complete back in uh, late January of 2021. Um, so at this point, basically everything at the treatment plant is substantially complete, um, ready for continuous use, which is uh, what your staff has been doing. Um, there are about a dozen punch list items uh, on the project that have yet to be completed. The majority of them relate to um, controls and um, the SCADA system and the programming of that system that we were working through with the contractor, uh, a couple different subcontractors and suppliers because all of the integration that's required between the equipment, the computers, and the electrical wiring. Um, but we hope to have that done here in the next couple of months um, and get the project uh, officially closed out in the retainage release. But at this point, we would just want you to approve substantial completion. And I'll bring it at the next meeting. Yeah, and Melanie will bring it at the next meeting. Thank you. Scroll down a little bit more, Jason. Yep. Um, yeah, so the punch list would be on the next couple of pages. You know, we keep scrolling down to the next portion. Okay. Yeah, it's like three pages, I think. Uh, keep going. Two more. Uh, next page. Okay. And then the uh, second item that Melanie's going to bring at the next meeting um, is amendment number three to our ex existing engineering agreement for the wastewater plant. Um, so over the past couple of months, we've been working with staff and with the USDA to determine um, additional uses for the remaining grant funding um, on the wastewater plant project. Um, so we have put together a very comprehensive list of many things that we could do at the plant, uh, including equipment and um, additional improvements to structures and, and the like. And we settled on um, something that we looked at a couple of years ago, uh, which is replacement of aerobic digester number one. That tank was originally built in 2012, so it's about, I guess it's nine years old, going on 10 years old. Um, when we did the renovation work in that tank back in 2019, um, it was determined that there was excessive corrosion for the age of the tank. Um, and there's some speculation as to why that happened by a few suppliers. Um, we got a price to get it repaired. Uh, at the time, we thought that price was um, not competitive. And we were under the impression at that time that the city was kind of tight on budget. 
um, because this was before um, we determined we had some accounting uh, mix-ups. Um, yeah, so, um, so we, we ultimately elected not to change order replacement of that tank into the project at the time. Um, however, after kind of getting to this point in the project and realizing we were at the budget, we thought it would be a, a prodigious use of the remaining grant funds to include replacement of that tank. When you say there is some speculation as to why the unexpected corrosion? Yeah, yeah. So um, there, <clears throat> the supplier suggested that all of the corrosion was caused by dissimilar metals, uh, basically stainless steel coming into carbon steel in the tank. Um, we did our own inspection, and we believe that, yes, there was some of that. But I think another reason was that the cathodic protection system, um, basically zinc anodes in the bottom of the tank, were undersized um, for the for the tank, and kind of because the corrosion has been experienced not just where the pipe and the metal or the pipe and the tank wall come together, but kind of all throughout the tank. Um, so as part of this project um, and part of the supply of the new tank, um, cathodic protection is uh, a big uh, a big design consideration and something we want to make sure is sized appropriately because it is a, it's a corrosive environment with uh, wastewater sludge Thank you. in that tank. Um, so that the first part of this is to basically design and, and bid out um, replacement of the tank. Um, we have to publicly bid the project because it's gonna exceed, uh, exceed the thresholds for Iowa bidding law. Um, basically would consist of tearing down the tank, replacing all the side panels, and then uh, connecting all of the, the dome of the tank, the walkway, all the pipes and uh, all the mixing equipment inside back to the, the new tank panels. Um, so that's that's the first portion of the work that's covered. The second portion of work that's covered um, is a lighting study, a site lighting study. So as we, uh, as we started up the front half of the wastewater plant, um, there are a couple areas in the plant that are a little lackluster um, with the amount of light that's provided. Uh, it makes it kind of hazardous for the operators, particularly in the influent and stormwater pumping building. Not sure if any of you have been there, but it's about two floors of steps um, down some quickly rotating um, steel screws. Um, you can see, but not very well. Um, so this study um, is going to be an evaluation of kind of the light that's produced um, based on what was installed look for areas that we can maybe supplement light, uh, particularly in this area and then around the Headworks building, which is the adjacent structure. Um, and then probably based on the price, uh, hopefully just go out for quotes and have a local contractor um, provide some enhanced lighting around that portion of the structure. Um, so any, any questions on that information? I'm sorry, were you saying that's an either or, or are you saying both? No, it's a both thing. Okay. Yeah, so the, the first portion would be the tank uh, tank replacement. The second portion is the lighting study. They're just Thank kind you. of separate scope items. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All righty, now we can move on to the next okay. thing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Uh, next action item in consideration of the Greater Jefferson County Foundation grant request application for Central Park Tables. Michael? So the Central Park Table project is nearing fundraising completion. Um, we did do a, a grant request last year for the Greater Jefferson County Foundation, and they, they gave 100% of what was asked for, which is just under 20,000, which purchased all eight tables. They're in storage at the Public Works Department, awaiting installation. Um, local Washington sales tax, 7,500, will become available in July. $2,500 was donated by Everybody's Whole Foods and Fairfield High V, and some additional funds were raised, totaling about $15,000. It's um, what we have or will have in July. And that's um, the low bid for the construction installation. So we're left with one final expense, and that's purchasing the brick pavers. So we could proceed with the project and just put in sidewalk and not put in brick pavers, but everyone who's, um, all the organizations who have seen the design layout preferred the layout with the pavers just because it kind of pulls in the look of the downtown a little better. So what we're left with is uh, initial bid, or a quote for the pavers last year, 5,300. Gas prices went up, it went to 55, and now it's at just under 6,000. That's what the current freight charge is, because as you can imagine, that's a lot of weight. 
And so um, when gas prices go up, so we've got a, a very current, as of last week, quote for all the pavers with shipping at just under $5,995, which is the re request that we would then make to the Greater Jefferson County Foundation. And as a member of the foundation board said to me, what's the worst that could happen? They say no. And the project can go in without the pavers. So this isn't um, going to necessarily keep the project from moving forward. It's just that it would allow it to move forward in its uh, original scope, which included the pavers that match the pavers all around the downtown. Um, that's basically what this would be. Uh, just submit a grant request, just like we did last year, and find out in July, I believe, if it's approved. Installation done by? By fall. By fall. I mean, it's, I yeah. As a park and, park and rec or? Um, so we got two quotes from two different uh, contractors who work with concrete, and that'll come at a future meeting where we can accept the low bid on that. And then to keep the price down, we opted to have volunteers actually lay the brick pavers. So you'll see me out there, you might see Melanie down on her hands and knees putting in the pavers, and then they'll do the cuts that are required, but most of them don't need to be cut. And um, the particular contractor who came in low, I won't say brags, but I'll say is very confident that they can put in a slab so flat that you can put the pavers in without sand and it'll, it'll be even. So I thought, oh, I gotta see that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we know all the prices now. We've got enough, like I said, to install them if we just wanted to put in concrete under them. But um, it doesn't hurt to ask. Greater Jefferson County Foundation has been very gracious, been a great partner with the city, supported many uh, projects. And one of the questions they ask is, how many people will this potentially serve? And maybe the reason they gave that full amount last year is because this is a public park. It's one of our most popular parks, and it's open to everyone. So all citizens of Fairfield, all citizens of Jefferson County, any visitor will be able to come. And the tables that are there function fine, but they're not quite the same level of class, the rest of the park, the rest of the downtown. So I think uh, people really appreciate the tables that match the benches and the, the pavers that match the rest of the pavers. Plus, there'll be more seats uh, when these are installed. So there'll actually be more room and two ADA accessible tables. So if someone's in a wheelchair and they want to come up, they can access them, which currently is not the case with the, the tables under the pine trees. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the grant okay. request. Move by Tuhill. Second. Second by Gandy. Any other discussion? Not. Please call the roll. Tuhill. Yes. Gandy. Yes. Lornoy. Yes. Pam. Yes. Rasmussen. <coughs> Hallie. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the next resolution: consideration to approve use of compensation estimate policy, Melanie. All right, the next two items are related to um, purchase of right-of-way and easements on Highway 1. Um, the city has a, a policy that's allowed by state law to use compensation estimates when determining land values when the estimated <coughs> purchase is less than $10,000. And so several of the properties along Highway 1 fit within this. And so um, on attachment A, Jason, if you would open that up and scroll down a little bit. Um, so what your first item that you're approving is the use of the compensation um, estimate policy. Uh, then the second item is related to, uh, you're actually approving the the land values and um, the land values were established uh, some of the properties were done had appraisals done on them um, several of these properties are related to the city 
um, somehow. And so we, we chose to do appraisals on all of those properties uh, that have uh, relationships with the city. And then those appraisals were used to establish the costs or the estimate for the other properties. Um, on the residential properties, you're looking at between 95 cents and $1.10 per square foot. And on the commercial properties, you're looking at 210 to 225. Um, I would ask that we exclude I, uh, parcel number 22 from the from the list. Um, we believe that the two dollars and fifty cents a square foot is a typo, um, but the GCG wants to look at that a little bit more. We were looking at it at the last minute, and he couldn't. We didn't have a good answer, so. Uh, we would recommend approval um, of the compensation estimate policy, which is the first item. Okay. Is there a motion? I would move to approve. Okay, thank you, Martha. S second. Moved by Rasmussen, second by Gandhi. Other discussion? Not, please call the roll. Rasmussen? Yes. Gandhi? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Ham? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Hill. Yes. Thank you. Um, and I did forget to mention that you're just approving the land values tonight. There will be other items that are taken into consideration during the negotiation. That's the landscaping, um, whether a driveway is torn up, um, and, and various features that would be on top of the land value. And so once, um, once JCG has shown them the land prices, then they'll uh, work on negotiating the remainder of the things. And after JCG has completed that full negotiation, the final cost of each parcel will come to you as a resolution separately. So again, we're just doing the land tonight. Um, so I would recommend approval um, of establishing just compensation values prior to start of negotiations, excluding parcel 22. Okay, council. So, so moved. Second. Moved by Gandhi, <laughs> second by Hallie. Any other discussion? Not, please call the roll. Gandhi. Yes. Hallie. Yes. Ham. Yes. Flournoy. Yes. Two Hill. Yes. Rasmussen. Yes. All righty. Under the mayor's report, I have a few things before I get to our Arbor Committee appointment. First of all, I want to thank Alex Stanley for Petrus Park. It's a beautiful. A beautiful park. I drove by there today, and it's going to be a beautiful addition to the city, and what a beautiful tribute to your wife. So we thank you very much for that, and we look forward to that ribbon cutting. Um, Trail Volunteer Day is June 5th. Uh, they're going to have two shifts, one from 8.30 to 12.30, and a second shift from 1 to 5 p.m., uh, that's to help spruce up the trails, um, and so we hope you'll participate. There is a sign-up sheet, and um, I think, well, I posted it on, the, on Facebook, on the mayor's page, and uh, I think we were posting it on the city Facebook as well, right? So we hope people come and help us clean the trail up. A um, couple weeks ago, there was an emergency management meeting and um, one of the discussion points is that um, we need to raise probably some additional funds for a bigger budget. For many years, probably 20 plus years, we've been doing a per capita assessment and giving that to the emergency management as well as the county does the same thing. Um, Brett uh, you know, Farrell is our emergency management coordinator. He has not had a race in four years, and uh, we think he deserves one. And um, we also really don't have emergency funds for ongoing maintenance items and things that pieces of equipment that we may need. So we're going to be looking at how to direct some more funds there. It could be that we, you know, increase the per capita. <coughs> it could be that it could be a levy that does not have to be voted on. Um, we don't know what that looks like, but it would be a small levy. The one thing that was bad around was three to four cents. And so raising somewhere between 40 and 50,000, we'll see how that comes out, or it may be some combination of the two. So 
we're going to be working that over the next couple of months. Our next meeting will be in July, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more information around that time. So, but this would be for the following year. So, um, last thing is that uh, we have another board appointment for the Arbor Committee, and uh, thank Michael for bringing Cass Cassidy Robinson to the fore. And uh, do you want to say anything about her? Well, she's Ray Lenz's uh, replacement as our DNR District Forester. So this is her full-time gig. And as you can see in her resume, she's got chainsaw use experience mm -hmm. and can climb trees and ID them. She basically, what she wrote was almost completely in step with what the Arbor Committee is about. So she's essentially the perfect candidate to be on there. Great, thank you. I think she's a good candidate and I appreciate you bringing her to, the, to our attention. So um, if I could uh, entertain a motion to approve her for the Arbor Committee, I'd appreciate so move. it. Moved by Hallie. Second. Second by Two Hill. Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Mm -hmm. Thank you, motion passed. And we will move on to city attorney report. John, do you have anything? Nothing else. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, committee and board reports. Environmental and franchise, we'll start there. Right, so we met on Mon uh, Wednesday the 19th, and we discussed uh, three items. The first recommendation from the committee is to raise the solid waste recycling rates from the current uh, amount of $12.50 to $13.12, is that what we figured? Yes. So a, there, we made a calculation error on Wednesday night, and we had come up with 13 31. 31, but really when we uh, checked it, 1312 is a correct appropriate amount. So the committee would accept that amendment to the minutes. Uh, it was a clerical error. By me. I did it. So we're asking council <laughs> to... Uh, now, uh, those monies will not only meet our obligation to waste management, we get billed, I think, uh, 1271 a month per account now. Yes and will be rising to $13 per month in uh, July. I think you're correct. And so the extra 31 cents will help uh, the general fund by paying the salary of individual who works on billing for the wa solid waste and recycling. Billing, solid uh, handling questions for the general Clerical work and, and phone work and yeah. that kind of thing. Is it 31 cents extra? The 60 over, over to $13, right? Right. We're, but we're only raising, didn't you say that we just changed this to 13? 12. 12. Did I say 31? Yeah, so it's an extra 12 cents, right? Extra 12 cents, right. Okay. Yeah. So if we get approval from council, then we'll go back and we'll uh, rewrite the ordinance and bring it to council for three readings. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You want a motion on that? I, I think to so. Take it to the ordinance. Okay, gotcha. So moved. Okay, moved by Two Hill. Second. By Second me. by Flournoy. Any other discussion? Rebecca, please call the roll. Two Hill. Yes. Flournoy. Yes. Hallie. Yes. Rasmussen. Yes. Gandy. Yes. Ham. Yes. Thank you. Motion approved. Okay. In regard to the sustainability coordinator proposal. So the money that we have in the solid waste fund is about two hundred and three thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and uh, the committee would agree to recommend to council fifteen thousand dollars of those funds would be used to pay the salary for the first year of a sustainability coordinator, or one third of the agreement with uh, MIU and with uh, the county, provided that that one third of the job description is consistent with use of those funds, meaning uh, those funds are collected by billing for recycling and solid waste pickup. So the, uh, the job description would have to include one third of that person's time working on those projects. Because we're not allowed to use the money in any other fashion except in a way that reinforces the enterprise that resulted in that surplus. So like landfill, diversion, composting, anything? Business recycling, education, uh, Ronald? 
Correct. So one of those which four tenants that Sierra Club brought to us yep. uh, for the, which was uh, redu reduction of solid waste. Yep. And right. so that's one of the main focuses of the cities. Since we're using these funds and it's an enterprise fund, we have to use it towards something like that. Educating people to improve the recycling stream so it's more consistent with what waste management wants. Mm -hmm. Calling out items that might be able to go to Goodwill or to the restore that aren't going there that it should be maybe. Stuff like that. Yep. All good things. And clarification, Doug, this is for one year? One year. Uh, and I, I told the committee this is just to get things started. And then uh, we'll look at it, you know, at the county, the MIU going go with us, then look at it again next year. Thank you. But again, like I said, you know, it's a little hard to say now whether that would generate three years of work for a person. So we could, you know, let's say that it goes down to half their time that they're spending now on solid waste and recycling, and then we could spend 7500 out of this fund and then find 7500 from another source that would allow us to free up that person's time to do other tasks that are consistent with what the plan is. Great. So is that your official motion, Doug? Yeah as written here, to uh, allocate $15,000 from that solid waste fund to pay for one third of the salary of the sustainability coordinator consistent with use of those funds as approved by an auditor, for example. Great. Is that Thank a you. motion? That's a motion. Second. Se uh, moved by Flournoy, second by Gandhi. Any other discussion? Now please call the roll. Flournoy. Yes. Gandhi. Yes. Ham. Yes. Hallie. Yeah. Rasmussen? Yes. To Hill? <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Approved. <clears throat> okay. Uh, last item here. I asked the uh, committee to add this cell tower ordinance discussion onto the agenda. So as you probably recall, a year over a year, 2019, at t wanted to put a cell tower up South 9th Street or 7th? Oh, yeah. So uh, that, the same location as, as currently uh -huh. being proposed. Yeah. So in this winter, I got a few emails about it. <clears throat> so an ordinance was written by some citizens, and they brought it to us for consideration, and the committee is asking council to uh, open that up, and let us, uh, let the committee take a look at that uh, recommendations, call out of it information that we think we could find useful in our existing ordinances, and then come back to full council with recommendations. Move to accept Environmental and Franchise Utilities Committee recommendation regarding cell tower ordinance drafted by citizens. Okay, moved by Gandhi. Is there a second? Second. Second by Flournoy. Any other discussion? No, please call the roll. Gandhi? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Ham? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Thank you. Anything else, Doug? That's it. Okay. Public safety and transportation. Public safety met uh, after the environmental franchise. Um, we reviewed a number of code sections. Um, one of the sections is the animal control area uh, in regard to defining dangerous dogs or dangerous animals. Um, we'd like the council to review the old policy and the new look at the new policy to see if the new policy is acceptable at this point um, the committee was not comfortable defining specific breeds as dangerous without them showing to be dangerous so I believe if I'm not correct or I believe what they chose to do is leave it as written at this point providing there was no concern from the rest of the council. Is that correct? You mean leave right. it as updated or as previously written? As updated. Okay. I think it's good. Okay. Brain a little bit with that one, but that's what public safety did. So okay. obviously the council will have an opportunity to <coughs> review the, uh, review the new, ordinances when it comes back, but would like a request to review it. And then if you have any suggestions or concerns, get with your other count committee members that are on public safety to revisit that ordinance if you feel needed. 
you want a date by which them to do this? By? ASAP. We're meet. We're we're again meeting Wednesday this week again to review more sections. So if you could, it's only one one or two sections for the animal control. So if you could look at those sections and get back with Katie or Paul or Martha, that would be great. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ways and means. Thank you, Mayor. The Ways and Means Committee met this after this evening at six. 6.15 approximately, and present at the meeting were myself, Ways Chair, Doug Flournoy, Ways and, Chair, Ways and Means Member, Aaron Koiker, City Administrator, Melanie Carlson, City Engineer, Rebecca Loper, City Clerk, Carl, Calvin Todd, Park and Rec Director, our Mayor, Katie Anderson was absent, one of the members of the committee, and John Morrissey, our City Attorney, appeared a little bit later on in the meeting. This is a meeting call at the suggestion of our City Administrator, City Clerk, and city engineer regarding proposed refunding. And it was, uh, we, we listened very carefully to the, to the description given, an explanation given by Aaron and Melanie and Rebecca. And luckily we have a professor of chemistry on our committee, Doug Flournoy, who's broken it down in a way that even I can understand it, I think. So what we're gonna ask if Doug, if you don't mind telling what we're doing here, we're trying to, well, well Doug will explain it. All right, so we have SURF funding that will support, if you ship it on that list, there are items four, five, and six? Well, currently they're, they're scheduled to, you, to pay for four, five, and six. All right. Because of the high bid for 23rd, 9th, and C Street, the bonding package that we were using, we were hoping that we would be able to fit seven and eight into the bonding package. That's not gonna happen. So we have to use some other sources to fund all the projects that we're looking for. SURF is a capital improvements reserve fund, which typically or historically has been used specifically for streets. Road use tax has to be used for any of the street projects that we have in, or has to be specific for street projects. So what we've been doing or what we've been trying to do is put four, five, and six into road use projects so that we can use surf dollars for seven and eight. And the city funds right now, we have a balance in our, or an unobligated balance of about a million dollars in road use tax, which has been growing over the last four or five years. So we would like to put the projects that were in SURF into the unobligated road use tax funds, and then use some SURF money to pay for the maintenance shop and the airport uh, snow removal equipment. The city has a number of different accounts. We all know that. Yeah. And they're all legitimate accounts. And we, we legitimately need to move some money to different accounts to fund certain projects because there are certain there were deficits in some areas and surpluses in another. Is that right? Well, provide yes, providing that obviously they meet legal standards to use. Right. Like, for example, road use tax can only be used for road use. Surf is a broad. Uh, broad uh, definition to be utilized. Right. So, but historically, it's been specifically streets. Um, other other pots of money for road use is also local option sales tax. Half of our local option sales tax, because of the way we passed it in the referendum, goes specifically towards street projects. The other part goes to community better betterment and city projects or to reduce property taxes. So yes, the, the streets department has a number of different funds. We've got ba uh, a, a good healthy balance in road use tax at this time. So the city is requesting that we approve the changes in the funding and the projects available so that we can get projects accomplished that have particularly the, the Parks maintenance shop and the airport equipment has been kind of put off for a number of years. And it, and this was, if bids would have come in normally, this would have been a great year to do that. But because we have some fund balances, this we'll still be able to do this and not put any future projects that may depend on some of those fund balances in jeopardy. So by doing these legitimate transfers, 
we're going to, this is, I'm using the, borrowing the words from Calvin Todd, our Park and Rex director, by, by doing these legitimate transfers, we'll be able to get more things done. Correct. Sorry, Mr. Flannoy. You gave the explanation that I understood. And so did he. So did he. So, um, so we're, doing, we're not shifting all the SERF funds out, just enough to cover seven and eight. There'll still be some remaining SERFs left, money left in four, five, and six. Uh, I don't know exactly for sure if that's completely okay. the whole truth. And then look, all right. nothing but, but so we don't essentially the, something to that effect. And then whatever shortage that we have for the road projects will come out of the RUT, the road you took. The road, tax. road use tax fund use balances tax fund. that are unobligated balances. Which that we, we should have. tell people that there's 1.25 million in there. Uh, I don't know if it's quite one point. It, it is 1.2, but I don't know if it's 1.25. Okay, 1.2 million in the road in use tax, yes. and that money has not been dipped into in over five years. Correct. We haven't done that. So it's a surplus that's unobligated at that point. Correct. It's right. got a purpose though. It's being yeah. saved for a reason, and yeah. that yeah. is Burlington Avenue is now a city street, no longer a DOT highway. So we were saving that up because someday we're going to have to repave all that street that we didn't used right. to have to do. So if we're pulling out of that, I'm not thrilled about it, but it doesn't look like it's that much because there's a $150,000 expected surplus in the fiscal year 21 road use tax. Is that what I'm reading here? Yes. So that was that the expected decline that we thought COVID would bring about that didn't? Mm -hmm. Or is that correct? correct? There was actually, there's also some uh, federal government money that was put in there. aid money put in there that it, it actually was a more money than what we anticipated this year, yes. And, and we were also conservative with our uh, estimates when we budgeted, so. Yeah. And the other purpose of that money is to do a, a bridge interim financing for Highway 1, yep. which might be on the order of 400000 Right. Correct. But that's interim financing, so that will get repaid back when we right. do the financing we'll for need, Highway 1. But we need that. the money to interim finance that, yes. So can anyone say in all these numbers what amount is coming out of the unobligated road use tax reserve? Not from this year's budget. I can't figure it out. I can't either. I need a protractor, an it's, abacus or something. I, I can't give you an exact number, but it is approximately that 255000 that we're using in the bond for could seven and eight. Could we make the motion to not more than 300000 Yes, that would be fine. So I'd make the motion not more than 300000 of uh, road use tax money be utilized to I'll meet these it. obligations. Yeah, I'll second it. I think we should. Okay, but what's, what was the recommendation of the committee? Let's, let's go back to that. What to, was the approve, recommendation? to approve the projects with the changes in funding. But we don't know the exact amount, so. Okay, so um, you want to amend, so that was going to be a, we so, haven't made a recommendation yet. So we, so our rec, what you're suggesting is a recommendation to the committee, is that correct? I guess, yes. Yeah, okay. With, with, with the caveat of not to spend more than $300,000 of right. unobligated road use tax. A cap, a cap. He thinks it's going to be less than that, but okay. just to be sure. And we don't have enough information to determine exactly what the amount's going to be, not yet, but we correct. will. Okay. How quickly do we reaccumulate that again? Well, over five years, uh, in 2016, we had a balance of $300,000 in road use tax. That was in 2016. We currently have 1.2. So we've increased that balance considerably fairly quick. Okay. But with $150,000 surplus projected for next year? This year. This year. Yeah. Then maybe in two years, we'd have this money back. Right. <clears throat> Where it is today. Could. Okay. The motion, the way I understand it, is to approve these okay. projects with the funding suggested, but with a cap of three hundred thousand from from um, the road, road use. use tax. Yeah. Okay, and it was seconded by uh, Rasmussen. Any other discussion? Now, please call the roll. Flournoy? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Pam? Yes. Hallie? No. Gandy? Yes. Tuhill? Yes. Okay, that was approved uh, five to one. Thank you. Um, next up is water and sewer utilities. Uh, we met tonight at 645 prior to the council meeting. 
we had one item on our agenda that we wanted to bring to council um, and it was a request from the Jefferson County Kids Child Care Center to waive the connection fee for the for the new child care center um, so we agreed to make a, rec a motion to council um, to waive a one-time new construction fee not to exceed five thousand um, dollars we had an estimate at maybe around twenty five hundred dollar roughly um, but it, it wouldn't it wouldn't include discounts on billing or anything like that it's just a we're just going to waive the one-time connection or recommend to waive the one-time connection fee okay is that a motion yes you're making that a motion okay it's moved by two hill it's our second 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 by gandy and a discussion well just a little more discussion we we felt this project was unique in that it's done by a nonprofit for something our community needs so we don't want to open up the floodgates that anybody doing a development come along and ask for a wave just because it's a development this is an important project that we haven't city hasn't contributed right. um, contributed to in any meaningful way so in this case we felt that this was appropriate okay thank you okay so it's been moved and seconded to waive this fee for the connection fee for the community child care any other discussion not please call the roll to hill yes gandy yes flournoy yes hallie yes pam yes rasmussen yes thank you approved unanimously do you have anything else no nope, that, that was, was it thing okay fire station task force report um since Katie's not here, I'll give the report. Uh, the fire station task force met um, for their first meeting last week. Uh, most of the members were able to attend. This was a meeting uh, to introduce the committee members to the current situation, um, get them familiar with the, the work that has been done up to this point, including the capital improvements planning that we, that we do every year. Um, and then the five sites that were reviewed by Klingner, uh, we talked, we discussed that with the committee. Um, the committee will be making, uh, eventually will be making a recommendation to council regarding, um, one of the two sites, the existing site and the DOT or the DOT site. Uh, so they did elect a chair and a vice chair in order to, um, have those proceedings of making a recommendation. Um, then also the committee, uh, Klingner walked the committee through some of the de decisions and thought processes that are going to be made in the next couple meetings, such as um, the vehicle bay requirements, the laundry requirements, the living quarter needs, and then other support spaces. Uh, and I think at that point, and Scott and Aaron can, can chime in, uh, but it really brought it to a personal level for the committee members. They could see where um, our fire personnel can benefit, where the community can benefit, and why we need to be discussing these, whether it's in the form of a remodel or a new building, um, that they could really see some of the required improvements. Uh, so other than the um, chair and vice chair, there were no decisions made at the meeting. The next meeting will be a tour of the existing station and the DOT, B, DOT buildings. Uh, so there probably won't be a very large report for that. Um, and then the following meeting, they will start to discuss uh, some of the building sizes and hopefully at the end of the third meeting, they have a recommendation for the council uh, regarding those two sites. We'll bring that back to the council, allow Klingner an opportunity to discuss with you guys a little bit more so that we can proceed um, on more detailed designs after we pick a site. Melanie, if they could take a field trip and go over to Washington, since they have a brand new fire station, it's pretty cool. You could talk to them also and ask them questions since they've had it now for, I'm not sure, a year or so. If there's anything they would have done different, any little tweaks they would have done, but uh, I got a tour a few months ago. I don't know, last fall, I can't remember when it was. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So good place to go see a brand new fire station. I'm sure they'd love to show it off. 
That's all I have on the fire station. They have a huge kitchen over there, by the way. <laughs> do you know that? <laughs> And huge I think kitchen we ha- where I they do we fundraisers. have a microwave cart, I think, is the extent that we have in ours. Yeah. So my dorm had better facilities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty close. They have a huge kitchen where they do fundraisers and flip pancakes and yeah. anyway. So okay, great, thank you. Anything else for committees? That's all we have here. Um, okay, administrator and department reports. All right, yeah. on the project update. Um, We've talked about all the projects tonight, practically. Uh, the city crews are continuing to work on replacing water main on Morgan Street between Burlington and Broadway. Uh, the rain has, the rain over the last 10 days have really slowed down all of the projects. Um, step two is getting close to their completion date, which we will probably not meet because of the last two weeks have just put a hold on things and we're still looking at another week of rain and by the time that dries out it will be 90 degrees and we won't get any grass growing so there will be work needed on step two um, in this this fall Uh, then on uh, 4th street and 32nd street i've had a lot of people ask when is 4th street going to start Uh, This project was let through the DOT, and the way they um, have their contracts is they have a late start date, so the contractor, um, if he does not start, he or she does not start by that date, um, they can occur penalties. So the late start date for 4th Street is August 9th of 2021. Um, I do not have a schedule on when they plan on being here, but we should be seeing it by that time. 32nd has a a late start date of September 13th of 2021. Um, If the contractor rolls in and like breaks out a little piece of chunk of existing street and then is gone for a month, does that count? uh, Well, they only have 30 days once they start. Okay, so they have to start and then complete the work. Yes. Mm -hmm. They can't pull that game where they just... Exactly, yep. So in DOT, I think it's 30... One of the projects has 30 days and one of the projects has 50 days. And I don't remember which one's which, but um, you know, one of the benefits of asphalt is a uh, relative quick turnaround compared to concrete, which brings us to Merrill and Carpenter. Uh, Merrill has been repaved and is in good shape, but Carpenter uh, was, the concrete was removed before we got the rain over the last two weeks. Uh, so there is going to be, um, quite some time before we have the concrete on that street. Many of the property owners have access through alleys, but it's unfortunate that it was completely torn up when the rain hit. Uh, We did have a sanitary sewer lateral that was discovered on Merrill. Unfortunately, we had to dig up a part of the brand new street in order to fix it. Uh, But once public safety is done going through the codification, we will definitely discuss right away permits in more detail um, sewer laterals should not be that shallow, um, but uh, we currently do not have any code otherwise. So we will be working on that in the future. And then lastly, um, getting ready to send out a bid package for the electric vehicle charging stations. So I would ask the council uh, for approval to close up to six spaces in the public parking lot while the contractor is working. Um, and then three parking spaces overnight. So six, open three of them back up um, for the evening crowd uh, and and then only have three overnight. So I would request those closing of those parking spaces. Melanie, is this the lot behind the Civic Center or is it the lot to the west of Gamreth Doyle? Uh, to the west of Gamreth Doyle. I'll approve the temporary closing of the six spaces for construction of the, or installation of the EV charger. Moved by Hallie. Second. Second by Rasmussen. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Thank you, motion carried. Okay, and then the next um, request of parking space closure that I um, have is for uh, two parking spaces on the east side of Petrus Park. Uh, again, due to the rain, we are holding the ribbon cutting on Wednesday rather than 
Tuesday, um, but I'd like two spaces in front of that east entrance so that uh, media and the photographers can set up there uh, and be able to get a good shot of the ribbon cutting over the east entrance. Motion to approve. Thank you. Moved by Flournoy. Second. Second by Gandhi. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Thank you. Motion carried. I, oh, yeah, go ahead. Aaron, um, sorry. Yeah, in the last couple of weeks, I've, I have attended uh, a, at least one Rotary meeting. I don't remember if it was two. There's four every week, but or every month. Uh, I've been to a Qantas meeting, and then this past week, uh, the mayor and I did do a presentation to the Manufacturers Association. We talked about uh, comprehensive plan projects that we were looking at here for this next year, along with some completion of projects here this past year. Um, we did have a brief discussion of a little bit about building permit or building codes again. Um, so we've had a little bit more discussion. Obviously, there's more further to discuss and move forward this this is at the spec building yeah this was at the spec building. how does it turn out the spec building is in good shape uh, i do know that there is actually somebody actively talking to our economic development director about possibly purchasing it i don't know if they've got that far but it's one of the more promising leads we've had in a while with the spec building so hopefully that will work out well good. how is attendance I thought it was good. You know, we had a the big, main, big hor horseshoe. I yeah. don't know, 30 people? Yeah, ish. Um, obviously, the main manufacturers were there, Dexter, Traffics, Agroplastics, the Foundry. Were many of the same manufacturers who were present at the meeting we had here uh, to the presentation of FMA about building code, were they present? I would say it was a mix. Okay. mix. Some, some yeah. of those people were there, but there were... I would say more pe there were more people there at the lunch. And then the last thing I have, uh, with the relaxation of the social distancing, mask mandates, stuff like that, do we want to go back to our normal council structure? Or I shouldn't say normal, what we used to do? Seating arrangements. Seating arrangements and open up kind of more to the general public as we were, or continue this way? for the near future or continue this way for a while? I would suggest that we continue this way for a while. We just, just there's just a change now in terms of mask in the council chambers. So I would suggest we probably want to continue this for, I don't know, 30, 60 days, see how things flow, and then we could, or how they work out and perhaps, perhaps uh, change it at that point. That's my thought, just looking at it. I miss sitting up in my normal spot. <laughs> I, I, I would like to I see mean, more of the general public allowed back in, too. Yeah, I mean, we've all had the chance to be vaccinated if we wanted to yeah. by now. Um, so I'm okay going back, say, in July, first meeting in July. I would I'll give us okay another it really some months. days. Yeah. I don't care. I mean, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've been I wearing my mask mostly we've got because we so sit close used to, to each other. being seated in this manner. <laughs> I like looking at you guys, but I, I miss looking at the person talking. <laughs> right. I feel like I'm like That's giving them the cold shoulder. Not, right. Right. I don't mean to, but we. <laughs> I'm so, fine with going back in immediately or waiting right. until July. Doesn't matter to me. Why don't we plan for July one? And, of course, that can be diverted if we need to, if uh, things go backwards. Sounds and that good. gives us a little, more, a little more cushion here also. Yep. And uh, sounds good. Okay. We'll take care of that for the first meeting in July. Okay. That's sounds all great. I have. Okay. Thank you. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by two hill. Second. second. Second by Gandhi. <laughs> we don't leave, I guess. No. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. It's been <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm.